don't understand. My, my colleagues on the other side, they talk about one of the ways to fight gun violence is to take care of the mental health issues of the gunmen who kill Americans. We can take care of their mental health issues and we can arm our teachers. That seems to be their only solution. Um, but yet, when we talk about common sense, front end uh, mental health um, assistance, uh, they don't want to fund it, nor do they want to protect our children from people, particularly 18-year-olds, who are exhibiting uh, the kind of conduct that warrant an intervention in advance before they do something to kill uh, our students. And so I don't understand the, uh, you know, I don't understand, that's, that's an, a contradiction. Uh, and really what we're getting today is a, a lot of spurious arguments and amendments to try to defeat this common sense legislation. Um, offered so as to score points with Wayne LaPierre, the executive director of the NRA. After all, uh, back in 2014, we know that the NRA spent $103 million in contributions uh, to politicians who protect and preserve uh, its ability to dictate policy. In 2015, uh, almost a hundred million dollars. I don't know what the figures are for 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. I do know that uh, the Attorney General for, for New York, Letitia James, filed a civil lawsuit against the NRA and Wayne LaPierre for wearing $4,000 suits. I admired the one that he had on at the uh, uh, down in Houston the other day, and um, he goes on, um, uh, he, he charters yachts and brings the whole family, cruises to the Bahamas, uh, just misspending whatever money comes into his grasp. And he was sued by the attorney general and had to declare bankruptcy, but now it seems like they're rolling in dough again, and, uh, and he's watching, and he's approving of... Uh, the uh, performance of my friends on the other side of the aisle, I think the American people see through it. They want common sense gun reform, and they want it now. And with that, I'm going to yield to uh, my colleague from the great state of Georgia who has been trying to get a red flag law passed through this Congress, and I hope that she's at some point successful in doing so. My colleague from Georgia, uh, Representative uh, Lucy McBath. Thank you so much to my colleague from Georgia. Thank you so much. I, I'm so sorely disappointed in my Republican colleagues as they just spew fear and hypothetical scenarios of ambushes in the dead of night. Uh, and to my Republican colleague in Florida, I resent your threats of one being a traitor in supporting red flag laws. I was describing Republican senators. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's just, okay. So anyway, let's just talk facts right now. It varies between 77% or 97% of the American public really supports red flag laws, either stateside or federal extremist protection orders. Between 1999 and 2021, at least 16,857 extreme risk protection uh, petitions were filed. The majority of these petitions have been filed since the Parkland shooting, and might I add, 8,162 in Florida alone. Use of these life-saving laws did not stop during COVID-19. Uh, there were at least 8,114 petitions filed across the country in 2020 and 2021. I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm not going to spew any more statistics. But I will say this. As a human being, as a mother, no longer talking as a legislator, I am talking just for real. You walk a day in my shoes, and you talk to the hundreds of family members and law enforcement and survivors who knew in advance that their loved ones were in crisis and there was nothing that they could do, 
their hands were tied. And I am out of time. If any of my colleagues would be more than happy to yield time, I appreciate it. The gentlelady yields back for 